Hey friends, what's going on? My name is Robin from Built by Colossus and today I'm going to be running through the setup for the Liz Rig, which came out a few days ago. I'm um, also going to do a run through for Ninja and Brawler as well, but since Liz is the freshest off the block, we're just going to go through Liz today. And yeah, the start as you can see has this proxy texture applied to him. You can download that along with the rig. There's normal textures and there's also proxy textures. So if you download the proxy, and put them in the same directory as the Liz rig, you should get the textures pop up when you open up the Maya file. So yeah, this is Liz in all his glory. And first of all, this is the main control here. Moves the whole rig and the main control is scalable. And then on top of that, we've got this main control up here called the settings control. And that controls all different types of stuff like the control viz, the face viz, geo viz, lock viz, lock the geo, and then there's an attribute called proxy geo. When you turn on the proxy geo, it's like a more low poly decimated version of the rig, but it's a lot faster to use as well. So it's really good for like blocking out shots quickly. If you want to just get in the silhouette quickly and not have to worry about any stuff on the face, the rig is a lot faster to use and the functionality is still there besides the face obviously. So. Just keep in mind that that feature is on all the rigs and it just makes your rig quite a lot faster with a few less, yeah, a few less goodies on it. So let's go down to the leg setup right now. It's like a hind leg setup. It's got three sections. So yeah, by default, you get this type of motion. Stretchy is on by default as well. And on top of Stretchy, you have all these bend controls, which you can offset the leg with. And yeah, you got the IK control here. But then you got this control here called the hind leg control. And on it, you got all these different attributes here. So yeah, you got the IK FK switch. Boom. On top of that, you got the auto hock. So auto hock is interesting. When you move the leg in IK, See how it all moves in like a straight line from top to bottom. If you have auto hock turned on, it's going to mean that the hock section of the leg stays straight. So it doesn't matter where you are, you're going to get that straight line. So that's auto hock and then stretch hock stretches the hock, depending how big you want that section there. And then stretchy is on by default. And then on top of that, you have just all the, you know, textbook attributes like the hock roll toe roll, heel roll, toe swivel, toe swivel, foot bank. And then you got all these like little FK controls on the toes as well. And then yeah, you got a few extra controls as well on top of that. And yeah, cool. What's cool is you can do this with the IK and then if you want some overlapping action on top of the IK, you can still rotate from this part of the foot as well. And yeah, you got the hip to offset that part. And moving up from that into the spine, we got FK spine by default. Like so. And you got the root control. And you got the hip control here, just beneath it. If you don't want the tail moving like that, by the way, you can go into the main tail control and you've got space over here just change that from local to world so now when you move the hip yeah a lot less crazy and yeah so on top of the FK controls for the spine you have the IK spine as well like so and that's accessible just from this control on the side on this uh, side C spine control moving up the body We've got clavicle, and then we've got the arms here. On the arms, you'll see on the shoulder, we've got, we got the world space and the chest space. So by default, when you move the chest around, the arms aren't gonna conform to the rotation of the chest until you swap that to chest. And then, yeah, you got that following motion now. So let's go back a few steps. All the same stuff on the arm, you got the bendies all along the arm. And even in FK, you got the ability to translate all the controls in FK. So 
yeah, a lot of animators want the ability to also translate those and lots of the times they're locked on rigs. So I just opened the whole thing up, do what you want. And yeah, so what I like about the hand, if I do say so myself, is we got this master, this finger master control here, which is used for just like really quick, really quick poses and stuff like that. If you don't want to be bothered moving around all the individual controls, you just quickly pose it with that. And on top of that, you can like scale the fingers in if you need to or whatever. And then you can, on top of that, obviously, still offset all those finger controls. So just go back. And on this control here, left arm control, you can swap to IK, like so. And on this IK control, you got this attribute called wrist roll, which I really like, which enables you to like push off different surfaces without having to counter animate the finger. So super helpful. And then you got, yeah, the length of the arms, upper and lower. And then what I like about the pole vector, quickly, is that you got the elbow pin, which will pin the elbow to that control, and then the elbow will follow around with that control. So if you move the IK control, the elbow is gonna stay in its position. And yeah, you got, you got sub controls on the IK, and then back to the arm control, we have all these attributes here, stretchy, bendy, preserve volume when preserve volume is turned on, it preserves some volume. You can see in the arm squashing and stretching. And offset locator just gives animators something to attach objects to if they're moving the hand around. So this locator is always free to tap stuff to. And then we got IK fingers, which are pretty cool. Blop, 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 blop. IK fingers. Oh, and there's also spaces on the IK fingers. You got hand and world space. So you swap that to world quickly and then you move around hand. Yep. And then, yeah, you got chest and world space for the IK hands as well. Moving on. Oh, we just got the tail quickly. Tail is pretty standard. You got FK tail and then you got IK offset controls as well on top of that. Like so. And then little, little eensy beensy controls for the end of the tail. Moving right up to the face. Oh, sorry, right up to the neck. We got neck controls here. And on the head, if you don't want to have to counter animate the head always, we got a space switch on the head. Just change that from chest to world. And now you have the ability to have them always facing forward when the neck moves around. So yeah, get back to that. So on the face specifically, we have the look at control to move the eyes around and offsets on that look at as well. If you need to do that for individual eyes. We've got so many eye controls actually. We've got, the, we've got this look at control and also on the face panel, but I'll get to that in a second. So yeah, we've got the look at control here. You can offset the eyelids with these controls. And then going back here, we got the mouth control, bottom and upper. And then on top of that, you got these sticky controls, which you can then offset the mouth further, like that. And then I got a jaw control on the face. Some animators like using the jaw control, moving around with the face instead of on a face panel. So I added that in there. And then you also have a control moving the top part if you want to really stretch that mouth out. So it's the jaw inverse control and then just the normal jaw control. Moving on, oh, we got these little ear controls as well. Moving on to the face panel, we got all these cool things on here. We got the squash and stretch on the top. We got squash and stretch at the bottom for chewing. And then we got, yeah, blink controls here. And on the actual Eye control here, we can move the socket, but there's also an attribute for blinking. So that's like that, and then you can bias the blink as well to blink more up or down, like so. And yeah, so we got eye controls again. Pupil scale is on here, if you want to scale the pupil. You got the nose control, duh, duh, duh. mouth control and jaw control, and then I just added this sort of ad hoc, but there's like, you can smile a bit if you want. And then, yeah, so these are the smile controls and then you've got the jaw control here as well. And then moving right up here, we got the eyebrow controls. And if you come down, you can rotate the main control to make it more angry or sad. 
and then you got all these sort of minor controls to do different parts of the eyelid as well. Sorry, the eyebrow as well. And yeah, so that's that's the main setup, I'm pretty sure. I mean, obviously if there are more questions you have, feel free to leave them in the comments, but that's just like a quick rundown of the Liz rig. Like I said, I'll be doing the Ninja and the Broader as well soon. And uh, yeah, feel free to subscribe because I won't just be doing uh, showcases of my rigs. I'm also gonna be doing different tutorials for rigging in general. So feel free to subscribe to that. And yeah, I'll see you guys around in the next video. Cheers.